Echo what Ben said earlier as well, man. Great job on uh, Thank you. bringing that back. The uh, the purses, man, the car yep. counts. You, you have done a tremendous job and, and uh, probably deserve even more credit, brother. Very, very happy for Appreciate you and the revival of that series. How about Boom and the XR1 version 2, like McCready said? What do we, I, I'm going to get with Mark Richards. We've got to figure this out. Yeah. What is it, an XR2? What, what exactly is that? I don't know, but what I do know is the Brandon Ford Pace truck has made the hard left hand turn to the infield. We're going to go green flag racing this time in the Nutrient Ag Solution starting zone. 25 laps. These are the Group A cars, $6,000 on the line, and we are underway in the Group A main event. No championship points, but it does count in the all-time winless. Oh. Rice, not a good start as he'll slide back to fourth. Down the back straightaway, here comes Blair, and we're going to have a Dave Warren Power Sports caution as we've got an accident in turn number two. Four cars involved, DJ. Boom Briggs, one of the cars involved, as well as Zach Doe, Mike Marler, and Dustin Nobby, and they play a game of chicken trying to get themselves uh, all going in the right direction. Did not get a lap in, so zero lap scored all. 25 still remaining. We'll go ahead and take a look at the Flow Racing Instant Replay and see what brought out this first Dave Warren Power Sports Caution of the Group A feature. Oh, right there. Zach Dome and Boom Briggs made contact. And then nowhere to go for Marler and Nami spins to good measure. Tail into the field, Ben. No harm, no foul. Nobody down here in the heartbeat hot sauce hot pit. But what you saw out of Josh Rice right there, he alluded to after he won that heat. He said the car wants to turn a little bit more than he's accustomed to getting into the corner. And you saw him go up into one and two and really get up into the cushion. We'll see if he can get a better start this time. But if you're Jonathan Davenport, you really hate to see that Dave Warren Power Sports caution because that was a perfect start for the 49 car. And one or more cars involved, right? Is it a complete restart, I believe, here? It is, did, yes. Did that yes. happen the first time you ever drove the Vibe? It just wouldn't turn? I, I don't know. Well, you drove the Vibe, the, uh, the, the old Pontiac Vibe, and got pulled over what, speeding through Atlanta. Rolling right through it, downtown Atlanta. Yes, you were. That cop pulled you over, and your hands never left him. I think it was Greg like Maddox that pulled me over. <laughs> All right, my friend. There would be a complete restart. <laughs> so Davenport and Rice, so a big break for Rice there as he had slipped back to fourth on that start. Moran in row two, Blair, Owens, McDowell, Dotson, McIntosh. What a field of cars this weekend, fans. If you can't make it to the track, we'll have all the action here on Half TV on Flow, but come on out. We've got the grandstands over in turn. Hey, they look a little desolate. Yeah. We need to fill those up, Saturday. We're driving like John Rocker through Atlanta. <laughs> here we go. Well, <laughs> It's going to be Jonathan Davenport on the pole. Josh Rice on the outside. We'll try it again in the Nutrient Ag Solution, Ag Solution starting zone. And a little game of cat and mouse being played down there. We're underway. Davenport into one net cornet powered longhorn. They try to go three wide for second out of two. Moran squeezing on the bottom. Devin Moran down the back straightaway. Six wins this year. Into turn three. Rice up top. Blair through the middle. Moran down low. What a good first lap. They're three wide off the turn four. And Moran. Oh, wow. Davenport by 0 .031 seconds has wow. the lead. That was unbelievable first lap right there, Dustin. I told you, man. He just <laughs> had the feeling this racetrack was going to be really, really good for these features. They're still two by two like Noah led the animals to the arc. And now Davenport, went you head down the front straightaway, you just caught the tail end of hard contact being made over in turns three and four to bring out another Dave Warren power sports caution is... Mike Marler and Donald McIntosh have come together with two laps. Uh, I don't know that we actually got that second one. I think you go back to one full lap in the books there. Yeah, As, uh, we'll take a look at the Flow Racing replay and see what happened to bring out this latest Dave Warren Power Sports caution. And there's the 79 over rotating it. Oh man, Marler came in there and hit him a ton. And that's how the week started for Marler at Houston's, right? A few weeks ago. It's how the last few weeks, unfortunately, yep. have been for Mike Marler. Just, uh, man, through no fault of his own, a lot of times you see he's out of the race car. Unfortunately, it looks like his night is going to be finished. And just a uh, tough break, man. One of the likable drivers in the sport. And uh, just uh, has been dealt a bad hand by Lady Luck here probably more times than he cares to count over the last several weeks. So one lap in the book, it's leader plus three, so we did not complete lap two. So it'll be Davenport, Moran, Blair, Rice, Owens, your top five, Dustin, then McDowell, Dotson, Dome, Bales, McIntosh was 10th, but obviously will not be on the restart, so Boom will move to 10th. 
McIntosh going to drive away from the accident. As you see, Mike Marler going to get assistance to get that Greg Bruning owned Skyline Motorsports 157 towed off the speedway. McIntosh going to make the turn to the infield. We'll see if he goes to the Heartbeat Hot Sauce Hot Pit to get work done on the uh, Billy Hicks owned double nickel chassis. So one down, 24 to go in your Group A feature here this evening. As James said, Davenport, Moran, Blair, Rice, and Owens going to be your top five. When we go back to Green Flag Racing, then it's Dale McDowell sixth, Ethan Dotson seventh, Zach Dome eighth, Ross Bales ninth, and then Boone Briggs will round out the top ten. And Donald McIntosh is slowly I'm not sure if he's trying way. to find his crew DJ or... I mean, they almost need the pit boards down here like you got a NASCAR. Yeah, they're going to take a look uh, on the left rear on that number 79 car, the Billy Hicks Racing Double Nickel Race Car. A little bit of sheet metal damage, not as much as you would think as hard as that hit was. But again, as hard as that hit was, you got to wonder if it may have got something in the rear end there as McIntosh pulling off his helmet. We'll get a word with him. Donald, what happened out there, man? Honestly, I just ran out of talent. All right, well, very honest, guys. Ran out of talent, looped it. And a uh, tough way for him to bring his first night to an end, but you got to give him kudos for owning it. Oh, absolutely. As the tail end of that car went around, and it looks like his night is indeed finished. Mike Marler again getting hooked up to the wrecker over in turns three and four. Field single file right now. They'll be lining up in the Delaware double file restart all the way until uh, five or less laps to go. For Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series rules, any race that is uh, 40 laps or less, it is... A Delaware double file restart up until five to go. Anything over that, it is 10 to go. And hey guys, as you would expect, uh, damage under the rear end of Donald McIntosh's car looked like some J-bar damage and some other things. So they'll get it. They'll regroup the Billy Hicks Racing 79, picked up Southern Nationals title and the Spring Nationals title this year. But a uh, tough way to start the weekend, but he'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Might as well have run the Summer Nationals and win it too, right? <laughs> Which turbo? I, I don't even know if the Summer Nationals are over yet, guys. I think now they are. Well, Dylan McCowan had perfect <laughs> attendance in all 75 of those races. So. <laughs> well, and I tell you the other thing, they bounced home a lot. They have family. Farms. They have yep. a lot of things going on. They went home and worked. I was trying to get that team to one of my makeup uh, Castrol events, and they looked at me like I was going to be buried somewhere on the farm if I tried to add one more race to their schedule during that. So, but it's cool to see them out here. They they bounced out a lot this year. And James and DJ, they had toyed with the idea of running for the Rally Auto Parts Rookie of the Year back during speed weeks. But I think they recognized down there, hey, we need laps at a lot of these racetracks, especially down here in the Florida tracks. And they did not want to run more than the uh, maximum allowed of races to be eligible for a rookie again next year. So I think there's a good chance you'll see that Sonic number eight out on the road with the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series full time in 2025. And again, it's going to pay 20,000 to win come 2025 as well, right? Yep. got a parts $20,000 as it is this year. See uh, Lucas as Oil Late Model Dirt Series down there. Yeah. Uh, Zachary Booker, I think he's made, I think he's uh, exchanging a battery or a receiver. It looked like on Tyler Herbs. I'm sure it'll turn into a T-shirt tomorrow. <laughs> have him and Miles Moose, have they kissed and made up? I, I would so. say no. Okay, I would say no. Okay, I, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. I would say that's not a possibility. Yeah, okay. So Tyler moving away, running, right now running 12th in that best performance number one. Actually, he'll be running 11th with McIntosh out. So Marler is out. One lap in the book, still 24 to go here tonight. Davenport, Moran, Blair. What a first lap that was between oh, those three. Man. Lucas Oil regulars, Rice back to four, Jimmy Owens in fifth. Moran, you see, chooses the inside lane on this Delaware double file restart. So that'll shove Blair to the outside, probably not where he wants to be. And Rice will be on in the inside. We know that's not where he wants to be. And uh, Jimmy Owens on the outside. We mentioned the father-son combination, Bob and Bobby Pierce, the only father-son to win this race. Donnie Moran. 1998. Yep. Yeah. yeah. In 1996. Oh, and sorry. He won it twice. Oh, he won it twice. Yeah, so that That's could right. be a possibility here as well as Devin is running a career year for that 99, and he has a shot at the Lucas Oil title this year. So one down, 24 to go. Davenport, Moran, Blair, Rice wins your top five at the Nutrient Act Solutions Restart Zone. 
under the green flag of Petey Halcom. Here we go. Not Shane Halcom, Petey Halcom up there on the flag stand. Battle for that second spot off. And it's Whoa. one and two, and Moran and Blair maybe leaning on each other a little bit. Thought they were going to go three wide. They did go three wide momentarily. Here comes Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell on the bottom. How about Jimmy Owens? Jimmy Owens trying to make a bid for third. Oh, they get together in turn four. And Blair, and they're off the racetrack. So the heartbeat hot, well, the heartbeat hot sauce hot pit, they almost made it into that. McDowell they, and Blair got hooked together. Yeah, they were stuck. They were stuck together. And the Dave Warren Power Sports caution is out. And Dale McDowell for the second race in a row, problems on the 17M and Max Blair. Maybe we'll have a replay for those at home watching, but look to me like they just got hooked together coming off of turn four. We still only have one lap in the book, yeah. Justin. Yeah, they did. They got it. Uh, it it looked like they got hooked together and just could not get unhooked. We'll take a look at the Flow Racing Instant replay and see exactly what happened. They come off the corner. McDowell, he maybe got in there a little hot and they made contact and uh, it, just, uh, it just shoved both cars into the infield. Huh. See if Ben can get, find out what happened down there. And right now they are trying to pull the right side door panel, the 17M, away from the tires, and it, it, it knocked it in a little bit. And I'm also going back and being reminded when we had the Hellraiser Jacks Pit Crew Challenge, one of Rick Schwally's rules that you had to have 20 members from different crews down here helping. There's a lot of guys trying to get up. McDowell's going to make his way back out. Looks like it was just cosmetic damage, but that's a tough one when you're running in the top five, guys, and now you got to go to the back of the pack. And there's Max Blair. He's taking the helmet off. That, he is broke. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he woed up I think there he was going to come corner. to the pits maybe yeah. Ben will get a word with him but he was he he may have woed up more than what we could tell from up here and that's what caused McDowell to uh, get into him and that's a tough break I know it's early in the going but it seemed like he had a pretty fast hot rod so so McDowell going to come back I both like Tim Sheets of Hellraiser Jacks with us this weekend thank you Tim for coming out and uh, Ben will get a word with what happened to Max Blair so it's only one lap still in the books well, and that's going to reshuffle this lineup as well as uh, Devin Moran will now choose the outside lane on this restart. You got to wonder if, it, if, if maybe that's because he knew that uh, he had Josh Rice beside him now. Rice will go inside. Jimmy Owens and Ethan Dotson now rounding out the top five. Yeah, Rice had lost a couple of more spots on that restart. Here you see Dotson, then Dome, Bales, Boom. And Uncle T, one down, 24 to go, Davenport. Well, it's been pretty exciting. We're trying to get the second lap in at the Nutrient Act Solution Three Start Zone. I think it'll be even more exciting if we can string together some green flag laps. Here comes Jimmy O'Dell outside, Ross Bales. Wow. Hells Bales. In the 87 on the inside, look at him driving through the field. He started 11th. The Joey Malone of car contact with Owens on the front straightaway. Davenport, they are throwing elbows back there. Again, points for tonight and tomorrow night combined for the six seats on Saturday night. Rice runs third, Bales fourth, Owens fifth. Battle up front between the drivers that are second and third in the points. Moran, who's second in the points, Davenport third in a turn one. We got three in the books, DJ. And Josh Rice right now trying to turn back the challenges of 11th starting Ross Bales. Here comes Owens on the outside. Here comes Ethan Dodson on the outside. Uncle T, Tyler Herb side of the best performance motorsports number one this time by coming around to four laps in the books. Dotson driving that like he did that modified for Steve Arpin a couple of years ago and he throws the elbow on Owens and here comes Tyler Herb to the bottom. He'll get around both Owens and Dotson and Jimmy Owens fires it in. Oh man. Jimmy Owens fired that in there. He and Dotson door to door to one, Dustin. Dotson going to think better of it this time, going off into turns one and two as they nearly stack up three wide. They race clean through turns one and two. Again, that's the battle for position number six on your screen. Zach Dome enters the chat. As the drive route across lanes, West Virginia going to make it a three-way dance for the number six spot. Tyler Earp fifth, Ross Bales fourth, Josh Rice third, Devin Moran second, and he's now got the proverbial rearview mirror full of Josh Rice. Did Dale McDowell restart on the back? Yes. He's up to 14. Oh my. We've only got three cars out of the race, and Marler, McIntosh, and Max. And right now, Davenport, one second the advantage down the back straightaway. You see the battle back here as we double box it. Jimmy Owens threw that thing in there to, well, it used to be Riverfront Stadium, didn't it? Yes. Yes. 
Great American Ballpark. Yes, thank he, you. He, he threw it into the Reds Great American Ballpark is what he did. Newport on the levee, baby. That's the fastest pitch we've seen for a Reds, play, Reds <laughs> player this year. That battle continues to rage on back there as Zach Dome doing Zach Dome things, working by. And meanwhile, Josh Rice works by Devin Moran in the battle for second. This happens two seconds behind your race leader, Jonathan Davenport. Moran takes second back. Rice washes up the racetrack. Ross Bales right there as well. Three cars battling for second. Moran in 99. Rice in the 11 R. And here comes Ross Bales. Jonathan Davenport looking for his 79th career win in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Right now, he overall this year has four with the Lucas Oil Series. There's the battle back there, Bales. He's a former winner at Cherokee in the Lucas Oil Series, but Davenport, 2.4 seconds as he starts to pick up the tail end of the field now for turn number two. Ross Bales won that Grassy Smith Memorial. He did. At Cherokee, that's right now. He's battling for a big River Steel podium finish in this Thursday night prelim. Looking to the inside of Josh Rice. We'll double it up for you at home because behind them is the battle for seventh, eighth, and ninth. And we've got a Dave Warren Power Sports caution. So I believe Spencer Hughes slow in that JCM Motorsports number 19M. So four cars out of the race, 12. Let's see if that'll count that in. I was gonna let you know, Max Blair said he just lost power. Thinks maybe it was a battery issue, but that's what took the 111 out of the show here tonight. So it did look on, it looked like he was turning to the infield and Dale had nowhere to go, but Dale McDowell is up to 13th. Now he actually beat a 12th with a caution for Spencer Hughes. Down to the heartbeat hot sauce hot pit with the JCM Motorsports car pin. Yeah, they got another right rear tire getting ready to go on that 19M as he'll make his way back out momentarily. Been a pretty good year for that team so far. Colton Miller, the team owner, five wins on the year. They slept the clash at the MAG down at Johnny Stokes Magnolia Motor Speedway. How about Dr. Dirt? Johnny Stokes in the house here tonight. He'll be here all weekend and I'm very excited to induct him into the National Dirt Late Model Hall of Fame on Saturday. So right now, guys, five, four cars out of the race. Mike Marler will finish 24th. Donald Mack Tosh 23rd, Max Blair 22nd, Dusty Nobby 21st. So Hughes will be back to 20th, so still 20 cars with 13 laps to go. Do we have a Todd Steel Building's early hard charger candidate? Oh, that is a really good question. It uh, is uh, Tyler Herb right now, up eight spots. Ross Bales up seven. Uh, guys, I was going to say, I was a contender. I just made it from inside of turn three to the bottom <laughs> of turn number one, and uh, I feel like I made up a lot of ground uh, right I'll there. I'll get you the slicker, slicker graphics, slickest <laughs> move of the race, right? I will take it. Hey, how about slicker graphics and the Fast Time Award money tonight? That uh, awesome. really cool stuff, really cool. Absolutely. And the, most dry, and the drive with the most most slickest moves of the race in each and every Lucas Oil feature. They're going to get a cash award at our awards banquet here coming up in December. Ben, I don't know if you could see that 19M or not, but uh, getting word from Lucas Oil Series officials, the right rear was full of mud. And of course, that would uh, elude to the rule change they made back a couple months ago at Lernerville Speedway, where if they did have a, a tire full of mud, it could be changed. Uh, it is indeed, pull. looking right around the beadlock, especially a lot of mud inside that 19M. So he's got a right rear tire. He's back out there and the lights are out. And they right. do lose their position. They don't get a, their position. Back. Correct. 12, 12 down, 13 to go, Dustin. It'll be Jonathan Davenport, Devin Moran, Josh Rice, Ross Bales, Tyler Erb, your top five. As we come off a of turn four, the Nutrient X Solutions restart zone. Here comes Devin Moran in 99. Devin Moran going to try to get a run on the 49 of Jonathan Davenport. Josh Rice changes his line, entering as well. Good restart for Tyler Erb. Turbo yeah. going to go down to the inside of the battle for the third spot. Ross Bales loses ground, and Zach Dome right there as well. How about Uncle T? Summer Nationals champion in that Eric and Kelly Brock car up to third. Rice fourth, Bales fifth, Dome sixth, Drake traveling up to seventh. His first time here at Florence for the seven car. The O'Reilly Auto Parts top rookie so far in the Lucas Oil Series. Up front, Moran not letting Davenport get away from him right now. The deficit is seven tenths of a second with 11 laps to go. Jonathan Davenport up on the wheel at the front of the field, rim riding around the Florence Speedway. The battle for third on your screen. Josh Rice has it. Tyler Earp trying to take it away. This happens a few car lengths behind there. Your second place car, Devin Moran. You see Moran popping in and out of your screen occasionally. This all happens about 1.2 seconds behind your race leader. Jonathan Davenport looking back. James Ross bails his ball a little bit. He is back in the sixth position right now, seventh position now, as he has got passed by Drake Troutman. That's fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth on your screen. Not bad by Dale McDowell from the tail up to 11th right now, trying to bid for a top 10. He may not be done yet, nine to go. Right now, the deficit is 1.4 seconds between Moran, who is in second, Davenport, your leader. Then it's Rice, Herb, 
Still the Todd Steele Building's hard charger, 13th to fourth, battle off a of turn four. Here comes Troutman in seven. Great Troutman around Dome. How about Troutman a top five? Nice job down the back straight away, and he's trying to pull away from Doman in front of them. The battle, DJ, between Rice and Herb off a of turn four. And Troutman started 14th. He's up into the fifth position right now. Tyler Herb, as we've mentioned before, he started back in 13th, and he's going for that Big River Steel podium. There's Josh Rice just in front of Drake Troutman. Troutman may not be done yet. Just seven laps to go. You're not missing anything up front because Jonathan Davenport has the Lance Landers Racing 49 on cruise control, a two and a half second advantage over Devin Moran. Well, Troutman there. Drake digging the bottom in seven. Rice up top. Down the back straight away. That is the battle for fourth and fifth. Right now, Tyler of solid in third. Moran solid in second as Davenport is starting to pull away now. Five to go. And right now, the lead is over three seconds for the 49 car. With Drake Troutman really looking solid in that number seven. James working to the inside of Josh Rice. Again, that is the battle for fourth. Rice has inched out in front of him at the scoring loop the last several laps. And Troutman may not be done yet. He may be working on the one of Tyler Herb here soon. Troutman officially fourth that time by at the strike. Four laps to go. Three seconds the advantage for Jonathan Davenport. You're looking at the battle for fourth. Trying to reach the Big River Steel podium. Battle back here. Rice still to the top. It's all Jonathan Davenport. You're not missing anything up front. Three seconds the advantage. They will have three laps to go with a driver out of Blairsville, Georgia, looking for his 79th career win, which is third all time in the Lucas Oil A100 Series. Heavy lap traffic as he gets around Hughes. Oh, he fishtails up out of turn four. Oh, man, Jonathan Davenport throwing caution to the wind in this 25 lap or less than two laps to go. Hughes, Smith, Hargrove and Collins all right there in front of your leader, and he's going to thread the go. needle coming around to the Bears' performance. One to go, Superman Jonathan Davenport. Wow. The non-glare is working, right? That's right. Yes. Bears' performance, one to go, and Davenport will clear Tyler Collins. Clear sailing down the back straightaway as they go into turn three. For the call, Dustin, as we come off of turn four. Checkered flag going to be out. The winner of your first Thursday night feature of Florence Speedway, Superman Jonathan Davenport. Second is going to go to Devin Moran. Third at the line. Give it to Drake Troutman as he was able to edge out Tyler Erb. Josh Rice, fifth. Jimmy Owen, sixth. Ethan Dotson, seventh. Zach Dome, excuse me, Ethan Dotson, seventh. Zach Dome, eighth. Tanner English, ninth and Ross Bales will round out the top 10. That will unofficially make Troutman the Todd Steel Building's hard charger of the race as he came from 14th up to third. So again, second, Devin Moran. He's got to cross the scales and pass the droop to make it official, but the winner of your first twin 25 here tonight is the driver out of Blairsville, Georgia. Cornet power playing underneath the hood of that Longhorn chassis here this evening for Lance Landers Racing, the Nutrient Solutions, Dyna Grove Seed, ASC Warranty, Mark Martin Automotive, Lucas Oil Sponsored, number 49, Superman Jonathan Davenport. At the UNO8 scales, it would be his 79th career win, which is third behind Scott Bloomquist and Jimmy Owens. Hey, don't leave. We still got another feature, folks. Another 25 lapper, 6,000 to win, 500 to start coming up next. Ben, I know Davenport got that win at uh, Batesville last year, and I know it's a home race for them next weekend as well, and that 50,000 to win Nutrient Act Solutions, topless 100 presented by Big River Steel next weekend in Arkansas. Yeah, that was a big one with Steve Martin and Lance Landers based from that area, pick, getting that win, and that's been a win that eluded them. He's got this win twice, as in a North-South 100 finale. He would love to get number three to become the third driver to do that. It's a great start to the weekend. You know, he made the comment earlier, he can start the night strong, but they can't finish albeit a 25 lapper tonight and tomorrow and we'll have a hundred on saturday but i tell you what that race car guys as that race went on he got better and better especially a mid-lap traffic he sure did a car looked really good hey don't forget by the way i know a few folks are up and using the restroom and everything immediately after the uh, the next race goes check or the final race of the night dan's tunes Dirt Track DJ Dan Rice will be having the party on the back straightaway, and that is open for everybody. And there is absolutely no better DJ in the entire world for my money than Dan's tune. So make sure you check out the party on the back stretch after the race is here this evening, and that will get underway shortly after the conclusion of our second 25 lapper. As, uh, guys, it's official. He passed the UNOH Tech and Scale Area. Superman Jonathan Davenport will get his 
79th career win with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, and he's going to make his way to Lucas Oil Victory Lane on the front straightaway to grab a word with Ben Shelton. That's right. That'll be his fifth Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win of the year. 79th of his career, as DJ just said. His eighth win overall on the year. Of course, picked up a Show Me 100 title back in uh, May. Man, that seems like that's hard to believe that's this year. He won that. He won the Dirt Late Model Dream. And tonight, he begins a pursuit after a third Sunoco Race Fields North South 100 title. $6,000 here tonight as we will talk to your Big River Steel top three. Devin Moran's made his way around. We should have Drake Troutman out here momentarily. And the second feature waiting in the wings. But right now, Superman, it's his time to fly. So he gets set to climb out of his race car and he'll have his signature celebration steering wheel in hand. Crew Chief Corey Fosfett down here taking a look at the race car that was flawless in that feature. As race fans, he's out of the car. How about it for Jonathan Davenport, winner of feature one. This salute to you, steering wheel in hand, confetti flies, and Superman will drop that steering wheel. We'll talk to the driver of the Nutrient Act Solutions Longhorn. Cornet power under the hood here tonight at the Donegro Seed. Lucas Oil, Midwest Sheet Metal number 49. Well, he gave the Midwest Sheet Metal spoiler a little love tap over there. Jonathan, how much of a relief is it? I know it's a prelim night, but to put a whole night together to start the weekend here at Florence. Yeah, it's a big relief, really. I have not liked my car lately uh, in the features, and uh, it drove pretty well right there. Honestly, I wish I'd have started further back where I could have seen where my car was better and worse at, but uh, once I got a little, little bit of a lead, uh, Corey was showing me, I started moving around a little bit. And it uh, seemed like uh, he, didn't, he never did close the sticks up. So uh, we'll just have to go back and watch the video and see uh, where we was better at and where we was worse and what we can improve on. Well, heavy lap traffic, you had a three-second lead there with a few laps ago. You still win by two and a half seconds. The car could go everywhere. You know that tomorrow night's probably going to be different, but you got to think early in the feature on Saturday could resemble what you just had in 25 laps here. What is your biggest takeaways? Uh, definitely just the transition of the racetrack. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to see that probably around more of the midpoint, I would say, on Saturday. But we'll just have to wait and see what, what Josh gives us there. But, uh, yeah, just uh, the biggest takeaway is uh, we're finally in victory lane talking to you uh, and not just setting fast time. So that, that's huge for us, huge for our team. Uh, we, we're just uh, me and two boys, so we're, we're a little short on help. But th these guys are really good. I can't thank them enough. They do an excellent job. Thanks to Nutrient Ag Solutions. Steve, I hope you've seen that. I did run the top most of the race. <laughs> um, uh, Donna Gross Seed uh, for th them coming on board two years ago, helping out. Bill Steen Shocks, ASC Warranty, Longhorn Chassis, everything they do for us. Who's retire go lithium uh vp fuels everybody uh, that's a part of this deal i got to thank him uh lance darlanders obviously watching back home rachel and blaine love y'all miss y'all mom dad and uh i know it's just half the feel but damn it feels good to win he was on the cushion he is in victory lane your VLAN feature winner jonathan davenport coming home in position number two he has been red hot over the past several months Devin Moran, and he is second on the Big River Steel podium. He's getting a word with series director Rick Schwally. Devin Moran, I tell you what, that initial start, I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be the Devin Moran show because you shot out of a cannon. What did you need, though, for 25 laps to do anything with Superman if you're going to get the win? Uh, yeah, I was real good on that start. We had a little bit softer tire than he did, but I don't think we could have done anything tonight. He was really, really good, and I tried moving up, but I couldn't really run up top, and I was trying to move around. Couldn't do a whole lot, but uh, second-place car, I, I can't complain. This racetrack tonight, aggressive. I, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked J.D. What's your biggest takeaway as you look ahead to tomorrow and Saturday as you go after your first North-South 100? Uh, I actually, I just told uh, Rick Schwally with Lucas that this is about a perfect 100-lap track. So if, if they can uh, hit the nail on the head like they did tonight, I think they could have a, a, a great racetrack. But Josh King and them guys at Florence, they always do a great job. But I uh, just want to give uh, Roger Sellers and Double Down Motorsports a shout-out. Robbie Casey and Connor back at home. Bigger Steel, CNW Trucking, Lazy Days RV, Pee Wee's Record Service, Bill Stein Shocks, Longhorn Chassis, uh, Red Oak pub car source um McHugh's on the hood there i've got so many great sponsors holland haskell um just can't thank them all enough and now uh, we just gotta get a little better for tomorrow race fans devin moran he comes home in position number two <laughs> rounding out your big river steel podium he's also your todd steel buildings hard charger from 14th to third how about it for drake troutman Drake, how about this hot ride tonight? I feel like this team needed this shot in the arm tonight. What was the big key that allowed you to come forward in the field to come home with a podium finish? 
Uh, you know, we just uh, we took last weekend off and uh, just went through this car really good and got everything straightened out on it. And uh, it's a new new Jay Dickens motor. Thing ran flawless tonight, and uh, got to thank him and Willie's Carburetors for putting together a great piece for us. And, uh, and a Longhorn chassis, Bilstein shocks, uh, all of our sponsors, of course, and uh, Hunter and uh, Aaron, Jerry, um, and my girlfriend, uh, my family, so everyone that uh, supports us. And uh, I don't know, hopefully we can keep the momentum going. Double duty here tonight. Does being in the mod also help give you some ideas for when you come back out in the late model? Those things are so different. It's uh, not really, no. <laughs> well, guys, we're Drake Troutman tonight. He's your O'Reilly Auto Parts rookie of the year points leader, and he's your Todd Steel Buildings hard charger from 14th to 3rd. Guys, that was a fun first feature. You called it, DJ. You said, I think it's going to be good for the main events. Hopefully, the second feature is about to be even better. Well, you just heard Devin Moran say you think this would be a good 100-lap track as well, so I see no reason why the second 25-lapper should not be just as good. They're going to wrap up victory lane ceremonies here for your Group A feature. There's still about uh, six minutes left in the 10-minute horn for the Group B main event. We're going to take this opportunity to step aside and thank some of the great marketing partners with both Flow Racing and Mav TV and the Luke a soil late model dirt series don't go anywhere when we come back we'll have the starting lineup for your second and final 25 lap main event here at the sunoco race fuels north south 100. General Tire delivers. ARP, the ultimate fasteners for racing in the dirt. With high horsepower demands, ARP delivers maximum clamping force and performance. When failure on the dirt is not an option, it's ARP-Bolt.com. At Big River Steel, we've always been known as innovators. We dared to make new rules as the world's first flex mill, including supplying the auto and electrical industries with steels that other mills like us can't all while showing what it means to be a sustainable steelmaker. We're proud to be the world's first and only LEED certified steel production facility. Now, as part of US Steel, we're committed to making steels that are best for 